I'll tell you what is on my mind. Whoa. That's a large truck, friend. Um, I'm just leaving a meeting. I'll tell you what's been on my mind here, which is very more importantly than what's on my mind, which is uh, a great point about economics. As you know, for the last two months, I've been uh, posting and I've been tearing up contacting news sources and people trying to get on television to explain to the American people instead of arguing over like partisan politics that you should be thinking about economic policies. Um, the other night, it's one o'clock in the morning, I can't sleep, uh, Sunday night, and I put on a 2015 discussion of the book Free Fall by Nobel Prize winning economist Joseph Stiglitz and his cohort Robert Reich, who is UC Berkeley's professor of economics. Both of them are Democrat um, economists, and as they're talking, you have to remember 2015, so it was before the election, and you hear Reich repeatedly, like he's one of the most prolific people on social media, present day, he's very vehemently like anti-Republican, hates Donald Trump, etc., etc., but here's the kicker. As those two are talking, and they're making a lot of great points, and they're right about, I mean, they're the, they're the smartest guys in the room, and in any room they walk into, that type of, those type of economists. He says, uh, Stiglitz looks over and he says, now remember one thing, the Affordable Care Act, when they finally passed it in 2010, got government to subsidize insurance plans for people who couldn't otherwise afford insurance, but everybody forgets the cost of prescription drugs went through the roof and the cost, the insurance companies made their money back in another way and doctors started charging more to everyone else who could pay. What's my point to that? When you listen to economists who like both of them worked in the Clinton administration and then Stiglitz was is the professor at all the fanciest Ivy League universities and then he went to be chief economist for the World Bank. These guys know economics and political economy like the back of their hands and both of them as they're talking to each other about the book both of them two or three times are saying to each other matter of factly hey remember when we were in the Clinton administration and you mentioned that point about um, like corporate jets and corporate welfare remember so and so and they wouldn't say the name like pulled you into the room and he said oh yeah they pulled me into the side of the room and said if I ever talk about the amount of money that goes to the lobbying crew and to certain companies who financed and bankrolled the administration and the democratic political machine, you won't have a job anymore. And the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, forget partisan politics, but they just said what Reich has seemed seemingly forgotten leading up to his hate for like his personal dislike of Donald Trump. Go around. What are you, my assistant? So, my point is, here you have two economists, the smartest economists, they're right about everything they're saying with like predatory capitalism and the reason why people don't like pure laissez-faire Republican politics, but I'm yelling, I start, I find myself, I'm yelling at the TV and I'm saying that that's the whole, that's the whole reason though. That's the whole reason that even if you didn't like Donald Trump for various personal characteristic flaws, what the hell does that have to do with someone's political economic policies? And the whole time I'm looking at the TV like, forget 2020. Both of these guys are saying what nobody in the Democrat Party besides these two, and they're saying it inadvertently, but they're, both of these guys have IQs that are like off the scale. When we were in the previous administration, and then they start talking about the Obama administration, and he's like, yeah, well, they wanted to brag and take a bow about the Affordable Care Act. They didn't bother to mention the cost of the prescription drugs. So here, you socialize and you make a single payer and everybody, illegal or citizen or old person, young person, irresponsible people who have too many kids when they know they have no earning power to feed them, everybody gets socialized medicine and they can go unlimited to a hospital the cost of the drugs and other people who aren't getting subsidized by the government, their costs go through the roof. And both of these guys didn't realize, you know, they, it's not that they didn't realize it, that wasn't the topic of what they were saying. They were talking to each other. 
but right there, I pause the TV and I'm like, why do you think in 2020, you are so, oh my God, we need, we can't believe Hillary didn't get in and we have to have Biden and we have to have, you know what's gonna happen? Two really bright economists, again, they're 75 years old, they're smart guys, they, they were the, the, at the pinnacle of the economics world, are gonna be sitting around in four years saying, oh, you know, actually, we, we mentioned to them that this isn't gonna work and they should do this, and just like the Obama and the Clinton administration, hey, come here, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, stop bad-mouthing a certain company that funded this. Or, we know that the policy worked for this group of people whom we wanted to bribe to get to vote, and voter turnout was really high. There's a lot of people who might not be a liberal who agree with you that trickle-down economics never quite trickles down, and it's not really supposed to be called that. And but, but while those two are talking to each other, meaning neither of these guys is running for office, neither of these guys is trying to scam people, I'm not saying that, I'm saying when you get these economists and they're both at high levels and they're talking to each other about economic policy and feasibility, you hear it come out of the guy's mouth. You hear him say, the Democratic Party, the, the, the shot callers in that party who donated all the money didn't really like him 